Our greetings. This is Top Hat and Buttered Popcorn. My name is John Savers. I'm your host, and today we'll look at uh, a batch of films, uh, beginning with Joe Dirt. This uh, stars uh, David Spade, uh, Roseanne and uh, Gary Boosie, um, Dennis Miller, Christopher Walken, um, Ms. Arquette uh, appears uh, in sort of a cameo. Um, the um, uh, dog Charlie and Charlie Jr. Uh, and a cast of many. Uh, this is uh, 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 sometimes amusing episodic uh, story uh, about uh, a man who uh, as a boy uh, was um, uh, abandoned or, or somehow uh, misplaced uh, by his parents, uh, separated therefrom, uh, and uh, his search for his parents. Um, uh, this particular film uh, has something of uh, the uh, Candide, of Voltaire's Candide uh, uh, aspect to it. Um, uh, the uh, main character, Joe Dirt, um, uh, has a very optimistic Panglossian uh, viewpoint. Uh, life's a garden, dig it. Uh, it does not seem to matter how many terrible things uh, happen to him. Uh, he, he keeps up his optimistic uh, face, uh, accepting uh, these things. Moving on. Uh, and as such, um, uh, uh, he uh, engenders a certain appeal. I, I like this film a little bit more than I thought I would when I ventured in. Uh, he's uh, the character played by uh, Spade, uh, Joe Dirt, is a, a little tramp of a fellow uh, who gets no respect uh, from anyone, uh, who is abused, ridiculed, uh, and who uh, through all the adversity uh, continues on with a, a certain pluck that you have to admire. Uh, and uh, uh, no matter that he may be klutzy or uh, foolish or obtuse or whatever, uh, he does have that kind of do dogged uh, persistence um, uh, moving forward. Um, uh, and uh, uh, so a, a certain sympathy is uh, generated for him. Now, uh, this particular tale um, is, uh, uh, follows him. Uh, uh, he uh, uh, tells most of the story as a kind of a narrative. Uh, he finds himself uh, uh, featured on a radio show operated by a, a Bring on the Freaks uh, radio uh, talent uh, played by Dennis Miller. Uh, and uh, uh, he is um, uh, invited to tell a story uh, and the whole audience listening is invited to sneer and ridicule him. But uh, as he tells his story, a, a different uh, uh, feeling is engendered in the radio audience, uh, and he becomes, as a matter of fact, a, uh, something of a hit. Uh, and he's kept on for a couple of more days uh, as he tells his complete story. Now, uh, we have certain highlights in his story, including um, that fateful day at the park. Uh, he has this. Uh, odd-looking uh, hair uh, piece. Uh, he, uh, his real hair is, um, is not there. Uh, he, as he was born, he says, without a part of it, the top of his uh, skull, uh, and that uh, a wig was put on uh, at the time uh, to kind of hide this, uh, he speculates. And uh, over time, the bone uh, grew over, uh, and the intermingling of the wig and the bone uh, held the thing in uh, place and he can't uh, uh, loosen it, um, so uh, he stays with it. Um, he uh, also has um, uh, a meaningful episode when he uh, happens to find a place called Silverton, um, I believe Idaho. At any rate, uh, he stumbles across uh, a family uh, with a daughter named Brandy. Uh, this happens when he goes to the rescue of a dog uh, who has uh, gotten himself into a tough situation, a dog named Charlie, as I recall. Uh, anyway, uh, he uh, is um, favored by Brandy and gets to kind of stick around and so forth. She's a, 
uh, quite a, an attractive little thing. And um, uh, over time, apparently, uh, uh, likes him quite a lot, uh, even um, to the point of falling in love with him. Uh, he does not seem to perceive this. Um, the liking part, of course. Uh, she's the only person in his life who has ever seemed to like him. But uh, uh, he uh, views himself, one, as totally unworthy. Uh, and um, on the other hand, uh, as he tells Brandy, uh, there's a hole in his heart that can't be filled until he finds his parents. Uh, he, he truly believes that um, uh, it was just uh, a misplacement and oversight of kind of human tragedy that separated them. And the fact that he does not know his real name, his dad, I believe, uh, called him Joe Dirt, uh, so that uh, his real name uh, he did not even know. He um, uh, pursues matters uh, and uh, has something of a sleuthing uh, aspect to him um, uh, and uh, manages to uh, get on the trail of uh, some pictures um, that lead him uh, from one episode to another. Uh, he finds out a little about a car and so forth. Well, along the way, uh, he meets uh, a few people who would become important to his life besides Brandy. He, uh, he has encountered an Indian, uh, apparently um, uh, Hopi or um, Navajo or something, uh, trying to sell fireworks. And uh, uh, Joe Derrett uh, gives him some good advice uh, uh, in trying to um, market uh, fireworks. Uh, they become rather friendly. Uh, this is uh, perhaps the second person uh, in his life who has uh, um, become friendly and thought well of Joe Dirt. But uh, they have to part their ways, and uh, another person that he meets uh, who takes a liking to him uh, in uh, South Louisiana, as it happens, is a Christopher Walken character. He plays an uh, ex-gangster, uh, head of a family in New York, uh, in protective uh, uh, cover in uh, South Carolina, I mean so, so Southern Louisiana, uh, as a kind of a school maintenance supervisor there, or some sort. He he gives Joe Dirt a job sweeping the school. Christopher Walken is rather weird in this film, um, uh, and uh, but nevertheless uh, he becomes friendly toward um, uh, Joe Dirt. Um, uh, at a crocodile farm, he runs into Ms. Arquette, who is also uh, one who kind of takes a, uh, a liking to him. Uh, to all of these people, uh, he has mentioned Silverton. Uh, and uh, at the, uh, toward the, uh, the end of the film, uh, he finds out that his parents are indeed alive and in California, uh, and he goes uh, and um, uh, by this time, he's famous uh, because of the um, narrative on the radio, uh, and uh, uh, he meets his parents, who turn out to be uh, opportunistic uh, uh, and uh, a rather uh, unappealing uh, couple. Uh, they're trying to merchandise clown uh, uh, devices, dolls, uh, plaster, uh, uh, Paris uh, type deals. Uh, Cupid doll type deals uh, in the form of um, uh, clowns. Uh, at any rate, uh, uh, he's thoroughly horrified and disgusted and uh, bummed out by the whole situation and, and leaves because he learns from them that they actually did leave him. Um, it was not uh, an error, it was premeditated. Well, now Brandy had found out herself about uh, the parents uh, because. Um, she wanted to help Joe, and uh, once she found out about uh, the parents and how terrible they were, uh, she did not want Joe to meet them, uh, but rather to have the illusion that um, uh, he had wonderful parents someplace and they were just lost. But uh, she couldn't protect Joe, and in calling over to Silverton to kind of leave a message uh, for Brandy, uh, he gets uh, a rival, an old-time rival uh, on the phone who uh, misleads him uh, in regard to Brandy's intentions and uh, attitude and so forth, and this further bums out uh, Joe Dirt so that he gets on a bridge uh, threatening to commit suicide. This is the one episode uh, which was um, 
contrary to his Panglossian uh, mode of uh, typically. Um, he is a celebrity, of course, now, so that there are all kinds of cameras and so forth. The police are solicitous. Um, one of them actually uh, is forming a lariat uh, from a bungee rope uh, just about the time that Brandy, uh, actually uh, hearing about uh, Joe Dirt's uh, a situation, uh, makes it to the bridge and tells Joe Dirt that she loves him. Uh, Joe, uh, sort of excited, I guess, uh, falls. Um, actually, uh, as it happens, the, the, the rope is thrown over his body and comes down around his feet, causing him to lose his balance. But at any rate, he falls over uh, the bridge and goes uh, way down and then back up and bangs his head on the bottom of the bridge uh, and is taken to a hospital. Uh, there he is um, uh, removed, I believe, uh, uh, shortly uh, from uh, his bandages and um, uh, uh, he uh, uh, is uh, informed, first of all, by Brandy that um, uh, because of this uh, situation, uh, an opportunity arose to um, uh, change his haircut so that she has given him a new haircut um, uh, and she hopes he likes it. Well, uh, it, it's unwrapped. He's given a mirror and we see that, uh, well, this is Hollywood, so uh, it must be um, kind of a, a dreadlock or a African braided uh, wig of some sort. Uh, he is um, wowed by it, uh, just uh, uh, beautiful and um, uh, he's very pleased and um, uh, we see them in the last kind of an epilogue uh, back in Silverton. Uh, there the Christopher Walken character has joined them again in protective custody. Uh, he has taken up with the Arquette crocodile lady uh, a character um, who is also a uh, move to Silverton, as has the Indian uh, a Kicking Wing, uh, who is now, thanks to Joe's advice, a, um, an owner of uh, a large number of uh, firework uh, retail outlets. Uh, and uh, we find out furthermore uh, that uh, Charlie had sired a um, uh, a son before being uh, uh, dispatched by uh, Brandy's father, uh, and um, there was a Charlie too. So uh, there you have it, uh, Joe Dirt's new family. Uh, I will say as a caveat that this particular film seems to um, uh, have little good to be said for uh, the natural family. I witnessed Joe's and Brandy's. Walkins and uh, Arquettes and uh, even Kicking Wing and so forth. Well, uh, it, it's hard to suppose that um, uh, this uh, uh, aggregate of misfits uh, uh, would uh, be a good substitution, but um, uh, this seems to be the message.